Great, thank you so much. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Zoe and very excited to be talking to you about Rebus Inc today. Um, you'll see in the captions that it doesn't quite uh, understand Rebus Inc, um, but we'll get through it. Uh, and I'll be chatting a bit about how we see ourselves fitting into the research publishing cycle. So to start, uh, just to introduce the project, Rebus Inc is funded by the Mellon Foundation um, and we're a project of Rebus Foundation, which is a registered charity based here in Montreal uh, with the mission to reimagine the publishing ecosystem on open principles. So of course, this is an open tool that we're developing. Um, we think of it as a research workflow tool. Uh, sometimes also we call it a research reading tool because it's really the reading piece of research we're interested in. Um, we also have a, a mandate to support arts, humanities and social science researchers in particular. That doesn't mean that other people won't find this tool useful, uh, but it's kind of nice that we get to spend some dedicated time on these disciplines because they often get a little left out. Um, that's a little flag that I'll always wave, uh, even in open spaces. And we've undertaken a bunch of user research to understand the challenges that they're facing uh, in their research workflows. Um, and what has really come out of it, and I'm sure this is familiar to many people, is that they end up with a huge amount of content um, without good tools to manage it. The tools that are available tend to be closed. Uh, they don't, they're not interoperable. And so that ends up with these kind of piecemeal improvised workflows. Um, that are sometimes more trouble than they're worth. Um, people sometimes just lean into the chaos because that's actually easier than using the tools available. So that's the, the problem we're really trying to resolve uh, to support that, that um, management of content and also then how you draw insights out of that content, how you build relationships between the sources and notes and ideas that you're working with. Then to go to the big picture, we've really drawn on a lot of work um, that's been done around thinking about this kind of this, uh, you know, the process as a whole around whether you want to call it knowledge production, scholarly publishing, there are lots of terms there. Um, and it's really critical that, you know, that, that in the pursuit of open infrastructure, this whole map that's in front of us here can be reproduced with open tools um, and, and be approached for, through an open lens because there may be things in this that, that either, you know, we don't need or we need more of or we need to change or we need to add. Um, and this is another version that I've come across just recently that really outlays, uh, outlays this idea that, um, you know, open, open publishing and open research is about more than the outputs. It's everything that goes into them as well. Uh, and so now I'll take you to our super fancy version um, of, of our, our own infographic, uh, which is a work in progress. So I just sketched it out for you this morning. Um, so what we're kind of focused on is this publication cycle and the idea that, uh, you know, the, that a source or, or a research manuscript is kind of produced by a researcher, then goes through this, this pattern of editing, peer review and publication in order to be released. Um, and that's really important. And there's a lot of work going into making sure that that can be done openly. Uh, so projects like Fulcrum, Manifold, uh, there are lots of them around that are kind of focused on this publishing piece that's really about like putting the content out into the world. However, what we've identified is a gap about what then happens to that content and how can that be, uh, you know, supported by open tools and, and with open principles. And so here we have the kind of completion of the cycle and the second part here is really where Rebusync fits. Um, so once, you know, once content goes out into the world, once it's published in whatever way, it's then taken by other researchers, it's read really deeply, notes are produced out of that, it's put into context with other sources, and then that's analysed, and all of that work then feeds into a new uh, new, new output, a new creation, a new publication. Um, there are lots of kind of outputs there that, that can exist. And so this, this is a critical part, as we see, to completing this cycle. Um, and then I'll sort of now give you a snapshot of how we go about supporting that piece of it. So this is a, a, a quick view of Rebusync. Um, in this platform, you can create and organize your sources and we have a nice non-hierarchical organizational system. Um, we, you know, we're working towards uh, having really wide support for different kinds of sources. Uh, so we know that journal articles, uh, edited volumes, monographs and things are, are the very kind of common go-to content, but you know, Twitter threads are really interesting and maybe you want to capture some ideas out of that maybe you know you're you're interested in scholarly podcasts and so they kind of become part of your collection we can have a really wide ranging idea of what it means to be a research source then we also have support for reading and annotating sources. Um, this won't all happen in the platform. We know it happens in lots of places. So we have kind of, you know, some import export options as well, uh, or working towards those. Then once you've done that reading and you've created your notes, you can organize them, tag them, and again, put them into context with each other. 
Um, one of those contexts that we support is the idea of a notebook. Uh, and so that's a kind of like a project space, but we deliberately don't make it um, guided towards an output because you might just be thinking through a concept and need a space to do that. And then finally, we're developing a suite of features that support the user to draw connections between notes. So whether that's in a linear form, like an outline that can then be exported to create, you know, the, the framework for a piece of writing, or maybe it's a mind map because people think no, in non-linear ways about, uh, you know, the connections that they're drawing across their work. And we have a few others there in mind as well that are coming together. Then as we're doing this work, we're also trying to think differently about scholarship and really expand the definition of research and who can be a researcher. This is a handful of the ways in which we do this. Um, and I think, you know, the, the critical thing here is we're really trying to lean into the reality of research rather than understanding it as a very structured process that only happens in one way. And the user research that we're doing is really driving that. Um, so everything that, you know, the decisions that we're making are guided very carefully by, uh, by the engagement that we have with researchers directly. And then out of uh, our user research and reflecting as an organization, we've also been developing our own design principles. And um, so all of these here apply to the product itself, but also how we understand ourselves as a project and as an organization. Um, so a couple of key ones here, obviously openness. We work with a very expansive definition of openness that goes beyond being an open source tool and also thinking about how we can be transparent as an organization what can we share, where can we share it, uh, and how can we be, you know, open to what else is happening in the ecosystem and, and responsive to it. Um, and that goes to coexistence as well. We exist in, you know, in uh, the same space as so many other amazing projects and, and um, you know, work that's happening. And so we're, we're really committed to staying connected to that. Uh, and that informs, you know, our product development in terms of having an open API and following open standards. And then is also, you know, driving our approach to uh, developing partnerships and relationships with other folks who are doing work in aligned ways with us. Uh, and so to close out, I think I will um, ask you to help us. So like I say, we, we really want this to be responsive to researcher needs. Um, and there are a few ways that you can get involved if you'd like to. Um, obviously, you can uh, jump on Twitter to follow new for news and updates. We also uh, have a beta coming together. Um, so if you're interested in getting your hands on the tool and giving us some feedback about it, the details are here as well. Um, and I am always, always willing to talk about these things, particularly in this kind of arts, humanities, uh, social sciences space. And, and explore what's possible when we work together um, to really, you know, transform that map that we saw into an open first version um, that really meets the needs of, uh, of researchers. Thank you very much.